how many times can we speak about COVID-19? Well, how about a different question? Just how long will COVID-19 be with us? The honest answer to both questions is a simple, we don't know. That is why we must speak and speak indefinitely. By now, I'm sure we all know someone, a friend or a loved one or a colleague who's been affected by COVID-19, or we know of a friend of a friend, members of extended family or public figures who've been affected by this pandemic. It is perhaps the story we aired here on Citizen Television of a family in Gikambura village of Kiambu County that brought it home for me more recently and more poignantly. A personal painful reality beyond the numbers and statistics we get from the Ministry of Health every day. A personification of that 15% positivity rate. A family that lost three members in a span of just 10 days. The agony of children who went from having both parents alive and well to watching both of them die and burying them in 10 days. What's worse is a daughter-in-law dying on the very same day the mother was being buried. And this is not just the story of Kiambu County. Here in Nairobi in Kibra, I'm informed of an increase in burials there from one to two per week to now one to two burials per day. The Delta variant is now running riot in this country. This is why the government must step up its efforts beyond just the purchase of vaccines. Tell me, whatever happened to free mass testing? As a tool towards better understanding the spread of the virus, its behavior and that of the citizens, most of the testing that we see now is of people who suspect they have symptoms and seek medical advice or of those seeking travel. You see, testing isn't just about numbers. It's about identifying contacts, testing, isolating those infected to prevent the spread of the virus. It is also about understanding which strain or variant we are dealing with. We must have timely testing of the right people. We must also have aggressive contact tracing. We must know where the cases are and have a strong surveillance system. We've said over and over how we must be testing upwards of 9,000 samples every day if we're to truly understand what this virus is doing. In addition, where are the public service announcements? When was the last time you saw an ad on television or even your vernacular radio station with latest information on, say, the Delta variant, how different it is, its rapid transmissibility? I'm sure you've seen several people on WhatsApp and online asking about where they can get the first or even the second dose of the vaccine, or even just allaying the fears of different people on taking the vaccine. And what of the so-called late death reports? I mean, how difficult is it to get real-time data collected from around the country on the number of deaths recorded in the country? The county governments, on the other hand, are also struggling, with the Council of Governors now saying we have about 300 beds in the counties at the moment. The Campbell County government complaining of the lack of sufficient oxygen. What is our approach to fighting this pandemic at the moment? And how has it evolved over the last 18 months since we recorded our first case? because we seem to be struggling with the same issues. Bed capacity, oxygen supply, sufficient testing. Folks, COVID-19 may be a tired story, but the virus is not tired. The advent of the more aggressive Delta variant, if nothing else, should wake us up from our seemingly deep slumber. It should be a powerful reminder that this was never going to be a sprint, that this will not have quick fixes that this, for the war that it is, will require strategies, tactics. It will require constant intelligence about the enemy. And above all, it will require consistency. Because any moment we drop the guard, the result is more infections, more suffering, more death. The result is another Gikambura, and another, and another. That's my take tonight.